Carter Brandon's room was on the first floor, overlooking a small courtyard. Before Carter Brandon could attend to his suitcase, the door opened and Miss Priest Williams entered the room. I've come to make your bed. It's already been done, love. Dad! Oh, I wonder if he'd excuse me a minute while I think up another ploy. Certainly. She smiled again and left the room to the rasping of stockings and the rattling of hairpins. She did not return, but was serving behind the bar when Carter Brandon met Uncle Mort half an hour later. They took their drinks into the dining room. The major sat in a lonely corner, cleaning his false teeth on a spent match. Ten minutes passed. Then another ten. Five minutes later, Miss Priest Williams entered the room and took their order. When she'd finished, she leaned over Carter Brandon and whispered, "I've thought of another ploy." Oh, I what? It's very subtle. I'll come into your bedroom just after midnight and take all my clothes off. Right. Can I have soup instead of shrimp cocktail? She smiled at him, soft as a prune, and left the room swift as a fig. What was she whispering about? She says she's going to come into my room just after midnight and take all her clothes off. In person? I assume so. You should have ordered the sauce derringe. After a while, Miss Priest Williams brought them their soup. Before they could dip their spoons into the resentful liquid, the rear admiral marched into the dining room, snatched up a chair, and seated himself at their table. He gazed at them intently as they wallowed in their cream of mushroom. He did not take his eyes off them as they started on their lamb cutlet, peas, and new potatoes. At length, Uncle Mort put down his knife and fork and said, "Have you ever been to Ashton in Makerfield? No. Well, now's your chance to make up for lost time." The rear admiral ground his teeth and tugged hard at his side whiskers. If you think I am doing this for pleasure, my man, then you are sadly mistaken. Then why are you doing it? Simple: to accustom myself to the eating habits of my men can make all the difference if we're attacked by U-boats. He glared, pushed back his chair, and after counting the peas on the major's listless plate, left the room. After dinner, they repaired to the bar. They were served by the rear admiral's lady, who showed them a selection of her knitting patterns and entertained them with a potted history of Folkestone and its environs. It was just before midnight that they left the bar and made their way slowly upstairs. Do you want to share my room with me, Carter? No. Why? I'm frightened. What of? The rear admiral's wife. Why? I'm frightened she'll creep into my room and knit me a muffler whilst I'm asleep. I see. Well, why don't you ask her to knit you a fair old pullover instead? I hadn't thought of that. Carter Brandon made his way to his bedroom. He put on his pajamas and climbed into bed. Of an instant, he fell asleep. He was woken by the opening of the door. Are you there? Yes. Good. I don't like talking to myself. Hmm. I'm going to take my clothes off. Right. He heard the snap of elastic, and the soft concurrence of goose pimples and woolen vest. Are you wearing pajamas? I'll just check. Yes. Are you going to take them off? Yes. He took off his pajamas, and she slipped into bed beside him. Oh, Carriard, Carriard! I'm sex mad. I am. I'm, I'm Welsh and Randy. Mm. I'm a towering Eve in volcano of lust and passion. How do we start? Pardon? Well, I've only ever done it in books before. What sort of books? Well, non-fiction, of course. What do you think I am? I see. Well, shall we get cracking on your frontispiece? Before he could move, the silence was splintered to shreds by the clattering of bells. A ship siren blasted out a series of long, slow hoots. Bells clanged and klaxons howled. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Miss Priest Williams let out a squeal of terror, jumped out of bed, snatched up her clothes, and bolted out of the bedroom. The clattering and the hooting and the shouting continued. Carter Brandon sighed wearily. He put on his pajamas. He yawned. He scratched his armpits. He scratched his ankles, and then he went downstairs. 
Uncle Mort was waiting for him in the lobby. What the hell's going on, Carter? Search me. Haven't got a clue. At this, Rear Admiral Bullions burst in through the front door. He was wearing a sou'wester and a large cork life jacket. Abandon ship, you bastards! We're under attack! Send up the flares! Launch the lifeboats! He dashed into the dining room. Major Musson staggered downstairs, looked around him gloomily and said, The third time this week! I should have gone by air! Uncle Mort and Carter Brandon looked at each other silently. Silently, they ascended the stairs. Silently, they made their way to their bedrooms. They dressed. They packed their cases. Silently, they descended the stairs. And silently, they left the hotel, which was bathed in searchlights and panicked by doves. They drove through the night. The blood-red beetle hummed happily to itself. After a while, Uncle Mort turned to Carter Brandon and said, Never, never in all of my life, Carter, have I seen a woman knit a fur I'll pull over so quick. You what? I'm in the nude, too. Bloody nipples. If I had my way, I'd ban them. In A Good Day for Banning, you heard Stephen Thorne as Uncle Mort and Sam Kelly as Carter Brandon. Miss Priest Williams was played by Liz Golding. Rear Admiral Bullions by Stuart Organ. The Rear Admiral's Wife by June Barry. And Major Musson by Harrison Dastic. The narrator was Christian Rodsky. Uncle Mort's Celtic Fringe was written by Peter Tinniswood and produced in Bristol by Pete Atkins.